One final way to customize the word ribbon is to add your own custom macros to the ribbon so that they are as accessible as any other commands. Earlier in this chapter, we created a reformat tab with a reformat group. And we placed on there the commands that we would use when we received a document that had been created by another work group or was a legacy document that needed to be pretty radically reformatted. That would be a time that we might also use this macro that we created. So we're going to add our single spacing, single carriage return macro here to the ribbon. The only choice that I really have is that I might want to put all my macros in a new group or I could put it here. It depends on how I want to arrange my ribbon. For right now, I'm going to add it to the reformat group of the reformat tab. So I'll right click, choose customize the ribbon, and here's the reformat tab where I'm going to want to place this macro. Now it's a great macro, but it doesn't rise to the level of being a popular command. You'll find all the macros in a group called macros. And I'm going to take my macro and select this group on this tab and click add to add my macro. I'm going to come back to this dialog box in a minute, but I want to click OK so you can actually see that it made it there and that it has a real long name that includes where it's stored in the normal template and some other information. I'm going to right click and customize the ribbon again, select that command, and I'm going to change its icon and name by clicking rename. I have a whole group of symbols I can use. By default, every macro that you add will have this macro code flowchart symbol on it. So I need to choose another symbol that helps remind me of how this particular macro works. And none of these actually scream out, make what was double spaced, single spaced to me, but this one comes close enough. Now I'm going to edit its name. Notice that this is just a display name. It has nothing to do with the functionality of this macro. And I can either edit some piece of this if I wish. I'm going to actually call this reformat double would be a fine name. Or I could call it something like remove doubles. Whatever is going to work for me. A real long name takes up too much space. This is enough to help me remember even if I only have three or four macros. I'm going to click OK. The name changes, the icon changes, and I'm going to click OK again. And notice, here's my macro here on my custom group on my custom tab of the ribbon. So here's our document that we had originally. I'm going to do Show All so that we can actually see that those two sets of paragraph marks are right here and the two sets of spaces between every sentence. And let's run our macro. And it says 165 replacements were made. Remember that this is for our paragraph marks and I'm going to say no I don't need to search at the beginning and then it tells me 245 replacements were made of double spacing and I don't need to search at the beginning again and there is my document now before we worry about it say oh no it's too compressed remember that we actually wanted to take this document and apply a different format to it that was the point so if we go to the Home tab, choose Change Styles, and change to any of the newer style sets, you'll notice that there's nothing wrong with our document. It actually looks quite good in all of the newer styles in Microsoft Word 2010. As you continue to use Word, I'd encourage you to be thoughtful about your process and your work practice because you'll identify more opportunities to customize the Word interface to make it your own your own macros, your own groups, your own tabs and ribbon, your own Microsoft Word 2010.